Hey everybody, it's Tim Miller from The Bulwark. Kamala Harris has her first ad up coming out of the convention, running across all of the battleground states. And as we've been doing, I kind of want to break down for you uh, what she's trying to do with this ad, why I think it works or doesn't work. So before we get into that, let's just watch the whole thing together. Every day across our nation, families talk about their plans for the future. And they talk about how they're going to achieve them financially. And prices are still too high. When I am elected president, I will make it a top priority to bring down costs. We should be doing everything we can to make it more affordable to buy a home. Under my plan, more than 100 million Americans will get a tax cut. I will help families letting you keep more of your hard earned money. As president, I will be laser focused on creating opportunities for the middle class that advance their economic security, stability, and dignity. If you want to know who someone cares about, look who they fight for. Donald Trump fights for billionaires and large corporations. I will fight to give money back to working and middle class Americans. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. All right, so this has been a little different than what we saw going into the convention. Uh, going into the convention, uh, it was these big themes about how we're going forward, we're not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. Telling the Kamala Harris story, talking about the contrast with Trump, prosecutor versus felon. As a prosecutor, when I had a case, I charged it not in the name of the victim, but in the name of the people. There's also the long overdue immigration ad where she owned Trump over killing that bipartisan immigration bill and talked about her bona fides uh, going after the cartels and gang members uh, that are you know, creating, cr importing crime from overseas. All those ads we were really excited about. This, this isn't like a get up out of your chair and start screaming ad. Like that's not what this is. What she's trying to do here is address one vulnerability that she has, which is that there's still a group of voters that are unhappy with the persistently high costs as a result of inflation. So she's got to figure out a way how to deal with that, right? Um, on the one hand, you don't want to carry all of Joe Biden's baggage, uh, even though you're the VP, you are not the president. It is, you know, everything, every price that goes up, every egg price increase is not Kamala Harris's fault. And so she doesn't need to be defensive about that. But she does need to address it. This is something that people are really feeling. They're feeling it when they go to the grocery store. I, I think even maybe more acutely now because um, you think about the types of families uh, that are doing uh, uh, like the pre-packaged pickups, like they have a weekly grocery pickup now that you can do online. You can see very clearly how much your bill has gone up uh, week to week um now with the way that you know some of these delivery grocery systems work so i uh, people are sensitive to it um that that kind of category is these upper middle class kind of suburban swing voters obviously working class people that are that are living paycheck to paycheck they're very sensitive to these price increases they notice them and so kamala harris has to figure out a way how to deal with it so like how is she going to deal with it in this campaign this ad shows you the outline number one she's trying to offer something that appeals both to you know kind of populist sentiments of you know people on the populist left that are unhappy and that want to blame corporations for the price increases uh there's a nod to that group at the beginning of the ad where she talks about going after price gouging some of that here at the bulwark we look at a little bit askance with the side eye I, I don't i mean you could already be going after price gouging like on the actual economic policy of that i don't really love it but you understand the politics of it you understand what she's trying to do there she's trying to reach that group but then you know there is a fig leaf to these former Republican swing voters that she needs. The, pe the people that we talk about a lot here, people have voted for Mitt Romney, people maybe voted for Brian Kemp in Georgia. How are you going to win those people over, the ones that don't like Donald Trump? Um, she's sounding almost Republican at one point, talking about middle-class tax cuts, You know, talking about how she's going to cut taxes, put more money back in your pocket. That's good. And then she also talks about housing, which is something that we noticed, I think, in her very first ad. She mentioned housing, housing costs, building housing. I love that. That is a very real concern. Uh, it is something I think that both parties really, but Democrats have been a little late to kind of addressing uh, people's anxieties over the cost of housing all over this country. Um, you know, for a while it was like, oh, this is just a big blue city concern. It's not really. Housing costs are 
are high, not everywhere, but in huge swaths of this country right now. And so th that kind of is the three pronged effort there on, on what she's talking about, right? She's going to go after price gougers. She's going to put more money back into your pocket if you're in the middle class, middle class tax cuts. And she's going to do a variety of things to try to address the housing crisis, build more, build more housing, housing credits, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the offensive. Then you get to the contrast at the end, um, which is she's trying to care about you, right? Middle class people, people are concerned about the grocery bill. People are concerned about housing costs. Donald Trump cares about billionaires. Donald Trump fights for billionaires and large corporations. I will fight to give money back to working and middle class Americans. I would like to see there. Um, maybe it just kind of doesn't fit in this ad. You only have one minute. Uh, but I, I think that what you will continue to see is this video. Let's actually just play it. Here's the video of Donald Trump promising rich people at Mar-a-Lago that he's going to take care of them. Because you are all people that have a lot of money. I know uh, <laughs> 20 of you and you're rich as hell. <laughs> We're going to give you tax cuts. We're going to pay off our debt. I love that video because it's like this grainy secret video it kind of seems like you're seeing something behind the scenes it's just donald trump and his rich buddies somebody with a little cell phone camera in the crowd they're laughing about it they're joking there's a very murray antoinette quality to it so i think that's kind of where this is going like this ad is laying the groundwork for that contrast which is donald trump and his plutocrat buddies are laughing about how he's going to give them a tax cut I want to give a tax cut to you and so she alludes to that but it's a very minor part of the ad the ad is mostly about what she's planning to do We'll keep an eye out for that. You're gonna you're gonna see more of that Donald Trump video, and I think that's gonna be the key economic contrast that the Harris campaign tries to lay out. So, um, big picture, uh, this is the Harris team acknowledging that they're seeing in their data that they still have a vulnerability when it comes to costs. Some people are still concerned about that. They need to get to certain elements of the electorate that maybe are just still kind of looking back at the time before the pandemic fondly. There's a little bit of an economic nostalgia among some people. I saw a tweet the other day about, remember the good old days where a Chipotle burrito cost six fifty five. You know, there's like a little bit of that kind of economic nostalgia going around. She's got to figure out a way to to address that, to talk about how her plans are going to be different, how, how she's going to alleviate the pressure on costs. That is it. It's a it's not defensive in the sense that it's like defending the Biden record. I think that's good. It's a little bit defensive in the sense that it's on defensive ground, right? Like it's an area of vulnerability that they're trying to address rather than attacking an area of Trump's vulnerability. So I think that is going to be the next step. We want to see more of that. I want to see more offense. Um, but I think that what the Harris team is trying to do here is, is demonstrate, look, we hear you. These are the concerns. That, like the top two legitimate concerns that people have really are the border and prices, inflation. These ads are going to be running uh, bigly, as Donald Trump likes to say, across all of the swing states. There's a ton of money coming into the campaign, and um, it'll be interesting to kind of monitor how the attributes in the polls go. It's, and one interesting thing to look at underneath the polls is, you know, the Trump Harris ballot number, like who's winning, who's losing, but also the number of who do you trust more on the economy. Kamala is doing better than Biden on that number. If she can continue to push that up, uh, that's going to help her prospects in November. All right. Um, we will continue uh, to keep an eye on the ads coming out of both the Harris and the Trump campaigns. And uh, you can check out right here uh, for analysis, especially if you're not in a swing state. You want to see you want to see what the people are seeing. Uh, we'll make sure you get a look at it. So subscribe to the Bulwark feed. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, if you like this video and our content, I'd love for you to become a Bulwark Plus subscriber. You get access to bonus podcasts, secret podcasts, and newsletters we put out every day, plus some behind-the-scenes takes that I don't always post on this feed. In addition, you can become part of the Bulwark community. Come over to our Substack and comment and meet other like-minded people. We'd love to have you. Starting today, you can get a free trial at thebulwark.com slash free trial. The link is right here on the screen and below in the description. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Come on and give it a free try today.